When people ask me which are the best books about the Church of Kora or the Kariya Jami or the Kariya Museum today, I always tell them the books about Paul Underwood. This was done more than 40 years ago and the first volume is about the historical introduction and description of the mosaics and frescoes. Volume 2 is the mosaics and volume 3 is the frescoes. And this is all done in the United States which is still available through Paul Underwood and the institution that he is he is with. Paul Underwood is with the Byzantine Institute in Dumberton Oaks in Washington. Now we're in front of the Museum of Karie, which once upon a time was the Church of Kora, C-H-O-R-A, and later was converted into a mosque as the Mosque of Karie, K-A-R-I-Y-E. And today, since 1935, along with St. Sophia, it's become a museum. And by the end of the third century, this area was empty and some 90 martyrs from Nicomedia were buried here. So it was a burial ground. And in the beginning of the 7th century AD, 610, at the time of Emperor Phocas, the first church was built over the remains of this burial ground. And this very first church was destroyed at the time of the iconoclastic movement. The iconoclastic movement from 726 uh, until 843. Then at 1078 to 1081, at the time of Nun Melanie, uh, the Lady of the Mongols, the second church was built. It was kind of destroyed at the time of her grandson Isaac Komnenos. So 1120 is the very third church built on the same site. The 1120 church of Isaac Komnenos lasted till the Fourth Crusades arrived here in 1204, 1261 and of course it was uh, affected as a result of the dispute between the churches of the East and the West. So it remained as a church after uh, the conquest of the city by the Fourth Crusades and in 1315 until 1321, the fourth and the final church was built here at the time of Theodore Metokites, who was the Grand Legoshit of Constantinople, a man who had the money, the man in charge of financing as well as religious decision maker. So he was able to build the fourth and the final church only with the two domes in the front and one central dome in the back. But after he died, this is the latter part of the 14th century, they needed a larger church, but the city did not have the means to add a new building, so they extended to the right-hand side with this elevated facade where the minaret now is visible behind the tree. But in the background we have another dome, a third dome, which is above the Paraclesion was added by the end of the 14th century. We will see all of them when we go inside. So when you look at the Church of Kora, which is a museum in our times, this is what is visible from the west facade. Now we're looking at the old church of Kora from the east side where the apse is located. It's typically a Byzantine church architecture. 
with stones and brick workmanship, one alternating next to the other. Now, in the outer narthex of the Church of Kora, we have Saint Joseph in the dream. The angel is telling him to move with Virgin Mary, one of his sons, and Jesus, one of his sons, and Jesus Christ is carried on the shoulders of uh, Saint Joseph, Virgin Mary following, and the one of the four sons of Saint Joseph in the background, and the donkey is following into Nazareth. This is the flight from Egypt to Nazareth. The second scene of the outer narthex is where we can see Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ in the front, led by Saint Joseph and the two sons of Saint Joseph towards Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Again in the third scene we have Saint Joseph on the way after he is told by the angel to move with Virgin Mary and one of his sons leading the way to Syria, to Syria, where they appear in front of Cyrenius, the governor of Syria, the Roman governor of Syria, seated on the throne. And there to the left is one of the soldiers of Cyrenius. The officer and the scribe of Cyrenius are reading the new laws of taxation to Virgin Mary. And then Virgin Mary appears in the front with Saint Joseph and his four sons. According to the Greek Orthodox understanding is represented behind Saint Joseph. She looks rather sad because probably the taxes were too high. In the middle of the fifth scene, we have Virgin Mary in front of the cave and Jesus Christ as infant in the manger where you see the ox and the ass are looking into the manger where the light comes out. On the left, the angels are praying and on the right the angel is talking to the shepherds while Saint Joseph is in deep thoughts and the attendant is giving the first bath to Jesus Christ. This is the nativity scene. Now we have here Jesus Christ for a period of 40 days he was in the desert and the Satan was trying to get him off the true path to God. So there you see him offering him these stones representing as the kingdoms, the six kingdoms of the earth. He was trying to give them to Jesus Christ so he would change his course. And the hand gesture of Jesus Christ in either case is no. And at the end, Jesus Christ has come down from the high mountain, from the pinnacle, without hurting himself. And the devil is now underneath himself, and he has lost. Without hurting himself, he has come down from the pinnacle. That's the test of Jesus Christ in the desert. This one is Jesus Christ by the River Jordan. With, Jana, with John and Andrew to the right. And that's Jesus Christ with Saint John the Baptist bearing witness to Jesus Christ by the river. And those are the Levites to the left. Just above the entrance gate, the main entrance gate, we have Jesus Christ, IC and XC, his initials. Kora, the name of the church, Ton Zonton, meaning Kora, the land of the living. Kora means a suburb, somewhere just outside the city limits, because this is where it was built in the first place, outside the city limits, in 294, as a burial ground. We look at Jesus Christ with his pinkish cheeks, his mustache and his beard, and his hair are of much finer gold than the background. He is holding the Bible with his left hand, and you can see the thumb pointing upwards, his index finger pointing to the right hand with which he is blessing. 
and the three other fingers are attached. So here, with the left hand, he is depicting Trinity. To the left hand side, here we have the pouring of the water into the jars at Kana, at Kana, and that's the changing of the water to wine, one of the miracles of Jesus Christ. And in the next scene, we have Jesus Christ with the multiplication of loaves or the feeding of the five thousands. Above the entrance gates, we have the two angels and Virgin Mary with infant Jesus Christ. And one of the miracles of Christ is shown, again, the multiplication of the loaves. And that is the slaying of the bullock to the right-hand side. That is King Herod, and the section to the right is no longer there. So in order to understand what's happening, we move on to the next scene where King Herod is talking to the Magi. The three wise men riding on their horses, appearing before him. The older one is to the right, the middle-aged one in the middle, and the youngest one to the left. Underneath the Star of David, which is right above the house where Jesus was born, of course he's asking them where Jesus was born for the massacre of the innocents. He is about to order the massacre of the innocents. The order for the massacre of the innocents is now given. And you can see the massacre scene. The infants are being massacred. A mother is trying to hide away her baby. In the corners we have holes. That's for acoustics. They have placed pipes. So the voice from the interior of the church can go to the outer corridors. And then we have the healing of the paralytic at Capernaum by Jesus Christ. The massacre of the innocents continue. You can see them being massacred. The babies and the mother is trying to hide away her baby. That's the Samaritan woman at the well of Jacob with Jesus Christ they're talking. We can see the mourning women from the massacre of the innocents. And then we can see Elizabeth and John running away towards the mountain to hide. And one of the soldiers is pursuing them with the sword in his left hand. When Jesus Christ walked into Jerusalem, 355 idols, which were inside the city walls, threw themselves down from the walls. We have the six church fathers from the left to the right, and that is Saint Nicholas, Saint Athanasius, Saint John of Chrysostom, Saint Basil of Cappadocia, Saint Gregory the Theologian, and Saint Cyril of Alexandria. All six church fathers who played very important roles in the history of the church tradition are displayed here as frescoes. We're on the side aisle of the church, which is known as the Paraclesion. At the top, you can see Jesus Christ in a double mandorla, and he is bringing Adam and Eve to life. But when you look at him, where he is holding onto the hands of both Adam and Eve, the color is blue. The portion of the dresses they have is also blue. Why? Because they're partially dead and partially being back to life. So he is pulling them vigorously from their wrists, bringing them to life. And that is, again, John and Andrew to the left. And then we have at the bottom where Jesus Christ is standing, that is the Satan and his hands are tied to the back and those are the broken padlocks of hell. That's a lovely scene with Virgin Mary and infant Jesus Christ to the right side of the six church fathers. The raising of the daughter of Jairus is on the right hand side. And that is Michael in the arch, 
in the arch. Now I want to show you all of this. That is the scroll with the final judgment being brought down. And Jesus Christ is seated on the heavenly throne with Virgin Mary, Saint John the Baptist, and the twelve apostles. And down below, where you can see the stripped people, those are the souls. The weighing of the souls is taking place. That black figurine to the right is the devil. He's leading the way for the man in the corner, and that is the rich man in hell. Whereas on the other side, we have Abraham and Lazarus the beggar in his bosom. And those are some of the orphans on both sides, but that section is white, and that is heaven. This is also heaven, and the door to heaven with the black section reflecting the darkness, and now we will see that next. Now, over this tympanum, half of it is darkness and half of it is light. Because people who are led by Saint Peter, who has the key to the door of paradise, with the cherubim on the door, the elect are walking vigorously to get into paradise, where you see the good thief with the cross showing the way, and that's Virgin Mary inside, and that is paradise, where you see Abraham and Lazarus the beggar in his bosom. So now this is the Paraclesion, the right aisle of the church, where you see frescoes. And this is a burial ground, so all of these areas down below are burial places. And we have another burial place next to it. But here you can see mosaics rather than frescoes. So this burial ground and the family that are buried right here are depicted outside as mosaics. By the end of the 14th century, the mosaics artists must have left town. So the work was completed by the fresco people. Is why you see only here along the Paraclesion the mosaics. Now, this is the dome of the Paraclesion. It's an umbrella dome where you see Virgin Mary with Jesus Christ in the center and you see 12 angels around depicting the 12 apostles and in the pendentives we have four historians depicting the four Bible writers we have them in the four pendentives the four pendentives we have them and over on the other side we see the ladder of Jacob and Jacob is wrestling with the angel he is there in a dream the ascending and descending angels and then we have Moses and the burning of the bush this is where he is ordered to take his shoes off so that is sacred territory and that's the reason why when we go into the mosques we take off our shoes we're now inside the Indo Nartex. We have a design underneath the arch. It's known as the meandering river design. Here we see Jesus Christ and Virgin Mary and we have Nun Melanie and Isaac Komnenos. Those two do not have halos because she is the foundress of the second church and nothing remains from the church of uh, Emperor Phocas of 610 AD and that is why he is not shown here but she is the builder of the second church 1081 AD so she is Nun Melanie as she is shown right here now before she was Nun Melanie she was married to one of the Mongol kings Hulagu and when Hulagu died she came back home to Constantinople and then Ahmet, the son of Lagu, 
sent word that he wanted to get married to her. She must have had enough of the Mongols, so she decided to stay here and retreat in a convent. That's why her church today is along the Golden Horn, known as Kanlı Kilise, which is still remaining as a church. Her grandson, Isaac Komnenos, who built the third church after an earthquake, is shown on both sides. This is a last judgment scene, of course, St. John the Baptist is missing, but the two major figures is Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ. Looking at Jesus Christ's face, you can see the pinkish cheeks, the mustache, the beard, the hair, are the finest gold mosaics you can find anywhere in the world. These are from 1321, that's when Giotto was making his paintings in Italy. So this is Renaissance, Byzantine Renaissance. And it's interesting that the churches in Ravenna on the Adriatic coast of Italy today, San Vitale and San Apollinare are from 549 AD. They still have Byzantine mosaics, but Constantinople, as you know, went through an iconoclastic period, is why these were done much later. Now, the, the way they are shown to be moving is represented by darker stones with mosaics, and when you look at Virgin Mary's face, subliming, showing to Jesus Christ. You can see the left cheek is a lot smaller than the right cheek and that is Renaissance for us. Now we have one of the miracles of Jesus Christ, that's the healing of the mother-in-law of Saint Peter. The lady with hemophilia, the issue of blood, is being cured by Christ. The man with the withered hand is being cured by Jesus Christ. And then inside the dome we see Jesus Christ. And we also see his genealogy starting from Adam to his time. This is all part of his genealogy all around. The man with the leprosy is being cured by Jesus Christ. The deaf mute is being cured by Jesus Christ. The multitude are being cured by Jesus Christ. And the two blind men from Jericho are being cured by Jesus Christ. All of these miracles happen to be in the Quran as well. This is Theodor Metokitas, the founder of the Third Church. He is holding a model of the church, which has only two domes, the way it originally was built in the 14th century. He is wearing a funny turban on his hat, showing the interaction between the Muslims and the Christians, because he is a Christian leader. He is in front of Jesus Christ, presenting the model of the church of Kora. That's the name, Kora Ton Zon Ton. Now that is Peter with the keys to heaven in his hand, and that is Paul of Tarsus on the right hand side. Now that is the three fathers of the church giving the purple colored skein of wool to Virgin Mary with six rejected virgins in the background. She is the one to make the veil to go above the temple which shows that she carries the seed of David. The next scene is where you see Virgin Mary in the Ark of the Covenant, in the Ark of the Holy of the Holies, with the rods of the suitors with Zachariah in front. And of course, they are trying to choose who should be taking Virgin Mary home to be the future husband. The rods are collected, and one of them has flowered, and that's the rod of Saint Joseph, who's going to take Virgin Mary home, and those are the rejected husbands. At the top, you can see baby Virgin Mary being blessed by the church fathers. And in the next scene, you can see Virgin Mary taken home by Saint Joseph and one of his sons. Virgin Mary is in front of the house with Saint Joseph is saying farewell to her. She's pregnant, we can tell from the tree by the side, and one of his sons is carrying the tools of the carpenter. And that again is High Priest Zachariah saying no to the offering of Joachim. 
And there in the next northern dome, we see Virgin Mary with more of the genealogy of Christ around. That's Virg uh, Virgin Mary's mother, Saint Anne, and Saint Joachim peeping through. And the angel brings the news of the birth of Virgin Mary. On the tree, you can see a mother bird bringing in food to the two baby birds on the, on the tree. And then here we see Saint Joachim in the wilderness. But after the news of the birth comes, they're embracing each other, Saint Anne and Saint Joachim. And then the next scene is the birth of Virgin Mary. That's her cradle. Saint Anne is giving birth. And the first bath of uh, Virgin Mary to the right. And the first seven steps of Virgin Mary from the attendant to the mother. And then we have the two peacocks, the two peacocks showing and adding a bit oriental uh, depiction to the whole scene and the, the parents are pressing Virgin Mary. Now we can see mosaics at the upper section where the dome is which needs restoration. Without any mosaics they have fallen down. The upper tympanum of the central nave is where we still see some mosaics. However the mosaics of the dome have fallen down due to earthquakes and they have fallen down from the apse in the front but we still have some mosaics on the side panel that's Jesus Christ carrying the book in the left hand blessing with the right hand where we see some beautiful marble pieces marble blocks cut down in the middle and open sideways like the pages of a book it's for further decoration the floor also has beautiful marble and on this side we have Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ MP and QV indicate the mother of God and yet above the entrance gate is the final mosaic within the nave of the church and that is Jesus Christ in the middle seated again in the double mandorla which basically shows that he is there from a different time frame with the soul of the Virgin who is lying on the bed and this is the dormition dormire in Italian means to sleep so this is the last sleep of Virgin Mary and that is Peter and Paul on both sides with other apostles they're looking all worried as she is passing away the angel brings from the right hand side the news of her death and that is the last sleep of Virgin Mary known as the Dormition. Now this completes our tour of the beautiful church of uh, Kora in Istanbul and this is where the finest mosaics in the world are on exhibit. Thank you for your wonderful audience.